Imagine if we came across an alien species that, instead of finding mates, they just individually popped out tiny creatures, and then those tiny creatures ran around looking for other tiny creatures to mate with, and then after mating, those died, but their babies grew up to be normal, big aliens, and then the whole cycle started over again. That'd be weird, right? But this bizarre baby making strategy is actually happening right here, on Earth, all around us. Hi, I'm Cameron, and this is Minute Earth. And one example of those weird mating mini organisms is probably right under your nose, or just sneezed out, whatever. I'm talking about pollen. Now, you might have heard that pollen is plant sperm, or some kind of plant sex organ, but that's not actually true. Sperm, by contrast, is a male reproductive cell that contains one set of DNA from its parent. It requires a nice, moist environment, and even under perfect conditions, is only viable for a couple of hours to days. So in order to effectively use sperm to mate, a species has to either get really close during baby making, or live in the water, where sperm can persist for a bit before encountering an egg. Now, flowering plants, like trees for example, obviously don't live in water and can't exactly get up close and personal with their mates, so just shooting out sperm simply wouldn't work. This is where pollen comes in. Like sperm, pollen contains one DNA set from its parent, but unlike sperm, pollen itself is actually its own separate living plant made of multiple cells that under the right conditions can live for months depending on the species. Sperm could only dream of that kind of freedom. But back to trees and pollen. So this tiny male offspring plant is ejected out into the world, biding its time until it meets up with its counterpart, the female offspring of the plant, called an embryo sac, which you're probably less familiar with since they basically never leave home. They just stay inside flowers. And again, they're not part of the flower, they are a separate plant living inside the flower. Once the pollen meets an embryo sac, the pollen builds a tube to bridge the gap between them. Now it's time for the sperm. At this point, the pollen produces exactly two sperm cells, which it pipes over to the embryo sac, which in the meantime has produced an egg that the sperm can meet up with. Once fertilized, that egg develops into an embryo within the embryo sac, hence the name, then a seed, and then with luck, a new plant. This one with two sets of DNA. Then the plant grows until it's mature enough to make a new one DNA set carrying male plant, which then goes off to find the female offspring to mate with. For most plants, the larger versions have two DNA sets, while the smaller mini-me versions just have one. But for certain plants, like mosses, the larger version has one DNA set, while the mini-me has two. But in all cases, it's an impressively clever and complex and even alien sounding way to mate, one that all land plants from giant trees to little flowers tend to use. But despite how alien it might seem, it came out of this world. You know what else is pretty amazing? Viewers of our channel, like yourselves. After our recent video about funding troubles in the science YouTube world, we asked you to help support our fellow creators on Patreon, and you're really making a difference. We truly appreciate everybody in this amazing educational community that we get to be a part of. It's certainly nothing to sneeze about.